So, I'm Peter Shepard-Skerwood, and I'm now going to play Michael Alec Rose's Eclipse of Hipparchus on the 1700 Stradivari instrument, the Ward, which is in modern setup. That means we have the tilted neck and fingerboard, which is longer, uh, which means I've got more space here. I've got wound um, um, synthetic strings with metal on the top of them. We have all kinds of, there's more metal on the instrument generally. There's a fine tuner here. There's a chin rest, which does make a difference. Um, uh, and we haven't worked on this piece, on this instrument for a long time. So we've just done this workshop on this. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in the moment as I react to this very, very different instrument at different technologies. That's really interesting. So I'm going to keep this. This is actually slightly different to play an instrument. So I'm going to, we'll. Can you go back even to 34 so we can get, because you I didn't get the e flat. Open, the, the open strings. Oh, okay. You so, didn't get the open strings. So why not, let, let's do it again. We've got the time. So we've done that. So we've so got to get we do it again. Yeah, no, leave, leave it running. I like the idea. Oh, I want to, I want to save this. Oh, absolutely. The first save, two pages want, are glorious. No, I also want to save the mess up. Okay. I think that's, that's important to have. You okay. Know, I think you know, yes. we, we show our failings. This is me screwing Not a failure. <laughs> okay, so try again. Keep it rolling.
So what was it like hearing it on the other instrument? <laughs> Give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> My feeling right now is that the Strad more naturally aspires to the cosmic condition. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That it, it, the, the, like, as I mentioned before, that the space, it, it's architectonic. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other one is a kind of human yeah. instrument, isn't it? Yeah. The other one sings yeah. in, a, in a peculiar, intimate voice. Yeah. This one... This one can almost be the eclipse, and the other one is looking at the eclipse, isn't it? I think that's it? right. I think that's right. And there's no right or wrong here, is yeah, there? Yeah, because of the power, the resonance, the, the construction of that instrument, with the modern setup yeah. perhaps also, I, I think it, it's, it has a degree of objectivity. Yeah, which is what you were talking about with the idea of this almost being an a Apollonian instrument, an intellectual well, instrument. Well, intellectual, yeah. intellectual yeah. Yeah. yes. And that's, you know, the, the, in, in Hebrew, there's only one word for mind and heart, lev. Mm. <laughs> so there, you know, there, the separation between intellect and emotion is impossible for a Jewish person. Mm -hmm. You know, which makes things very tragic right now. Yeah. The point being that the intellectuality of this instrument by no means undermines any of its emotional qualities. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that the Yamati, for all kinds of reasons, is more subjective. Yeah. Whatever that means. It's, it's singing in a personal way. Subject to frailty and... Yeah, you know, and, and I think it's a technical matter too. You yes, were absolutely. Describing yeah, absolutely. It, right? That's part, but it was the interesting thing is there are certain things... I don't know if it's what easier, but certain things which are certainly more convenient on others. The curious thing is that actually voicing the chords on, because it's germane to what you just said earlier, voicing the chords on an instrument which sings chords as easily as this actually is harder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because because when you play, uh, it's opening the whole thing. Whereas the other one, like playing a harpsichord, yeah. you are finding a route through it. Yeah, yes, Here, yes, yes. The instrument is actually to a degree saying, oh, that's no problem, which means right. you've got less room to mess up. That's what I meant by line, by yeah. the way, too. The line is almost, I mean, it's not almost, it is inevitable, especially in that instrument. We've been, I, I was thinking earlier on, you and I having a conversation about Stravinsky, and I was thinking as you were talking, the whole feeling of... Um, <sighs> the balance between, that's his ballet Apollo, Apollo Musicetti. The balance between emotion and intellect mm -hmm. there is mm -hmm. what you're talking about, mm -hmm. isn't it? The grace mm -hmm. sits in both places, effectively. Yeah. I mean, neoclassicism is such a misnomer for what Stravinsky's doing there. Well, I, I prefer it in the, when it was coined early in the 1700s, literally right. a new classicism, not the idea of a kind of besmirched kind of well, miniaturized classicism. It's just that Stravinsky's version of it, which it makes it so consistent with Le Sacre du Printemps, mm -hmm. is that it's an archaic classicism. Yeah. It's, which, it's, it's archaic. Which funny, and at the same time, it's new at the same moment, which is... Yeah, well, that's we, the only way, that's the modernist ethos. So if we take it back to the instrument here, that's what makes an instrument like this tiny, apart from the sound, yeah. is the framing of the glory of nature within the arcs right. and curves and scroll of yeah. ionic classicism. Right, and that's where our friend and mentor Rockberg understood modernism even better than the avant-garde that, uh, that preceded him. Because modernism has to do with, with getting back to sources, getting back to origins, yeah. getting back to the font of our own tradition. And that's what George tried to do. Whereas someone like Boulez or Stockhausen only wanted to make it new. Mm. And by that point, that had become an ossified orthodoxy, with all due respect. Yes, okay. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. So with all the flaws of postmodernism, I would say that, you know, that my teacher, Rockberg, and myself, in our flawed way, are, are truer to Stravinsky in some ways than what happened right after Stravinsky. Mm, that's very interesting. Because <laughs> we understand with Uncle Igor that the only way to be true to an instrument like that is to get back to the actual origin of what that instrument was meant for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all the things we've been talking about, yeah. line, open strings. And of course the kind of outdoorness of something right. like uh, of, of uh, yeah. the folk, the being outside. Yes, exactly. pastoral. <laughs> Thank you very much, that's great.